Hey folks, Joseph Vincent Sabora here. Yep, I'm wearing my brand new Joe Pool shirt that I got at JCPenney. And it definitely looks good on me. <laughs> and it fits too. But I'm about to do a movie review this week. Apparently, I have seen some more movies. And hopefully I'll get to continue to go on because... You know, there are times when I don't do that many videos. I, I like to take a break every once in a while. Or any other. But I'm going to review a film that came out uh, just recently on July 25th of this year. And it's already released on Blu-ray and DVD in a deluxe edition. And it's a film called Batman the Killing Joke. This is based on the graphic novel that became the number one New York Times best-selling novel for its time back in 1988. And I was actually looking forward to this one because, um, for starters, they brought back Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill to do the voice of Batman and the Joker because they actually had done the voices since the TV show Batman the Animated Series. And I used to watch this show a lot. I always loved Batman ever since I started watching um, all the uh, classic shows and I have read the comic books too. Yes, I, I always been a Batman fan as well. See? Well, you tell you because I do love DC Comics as well. As much as I enjoy Marvel, I do enjoy DC. And I just recently saw uh, Suicide Squad uh, earlier. Uh, I'll do a review on that later. But I know I saw Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, which I haven't done a review yet, but I just figured maybe uh, I'll take some time to do so because I remember being this disappointed. I haven't seen the Ultimate Edition yet, which is the longer version of the film, but technically it'll probably do some justice to it, but unfortunately. That still wouldn't make it up for such a bad film. And that's sad. But this one, I mean, it, it does look interesting because um, not only did we got Kevin Conway and Mark Hamill providing the voices, and this is the first time in years, but you got Tara Strong to do the voice of Batgirl. And I know Tara Strong's been doing a lot of voice acting ever since. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, she went on to do voice acting for for Bubbles in the Powerpuff Girls. Love that show. I'm talking about the original, not the, the new one that we got. And I know she winds up doing all these other voice acting of other characters like Starfire from Teen Titans as well as Teen Titans Go. Um, does the voice of Dill Pickles on Rugrats. And um, several other shows that she's been doing. But she's a very talented voice actress. And I'm glad to see you know, she got to do the voice of Batgirl, which I think she has done in all the other Batman animated films um, in the later years, so either way. I would say, I think this movie deserves better, but I'm going to get to the review uh, right now. It stars Kevin Conroy, Mark Campbell, Tara Strong, Way Rice, who's been in other TV shows and movies such as Swamp Thing which is a 1982 film by Wes Craven It's based on a DC comic book as well as um, the TV series uh, Alien Nation that was based on the 1988 film and he was also in other appearances he was even played one of the bad guys uh, yeah, who was uh, one of the partners of, uh, of Bob Decker in the film Robocop 1987 film that is. Robert Aiken Downs, John DiMaggio, Brian George, J.P. Carlack, Andrew Kishnell, Nolan North, Moby Sterling, Carl Walgren, you know, who does a lot of voice acting in uh, other shows, mostly uh, Japanese anime, like which one of Robin, for instance? And Wick D. Wasserman. It's written by Brian Alasarello, 
and it's directed by Sam Liu. The movie begins where we meet Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, who tries to stop a robbery but fails, but suddenly manages to stop a fleeing criminal named Paris France with the help of Batman, which suddenly develops a dangerous obsession as she started receiving a message from France that Batman suddenly shares concerns with but wasn't taking itself so seriously for the situation alone. So Fonz suddenly tricks uh, Batgirl by finding his uncle's dead body. Batman suddenly becomes concerned about her safety and wants to taking her off the case. Feeling very outraged, Batgirl started to attack Batman both verbally and physically and on top of that on the top of the rooftop she shares a kiss and had sex yeah. so then the next night Batgirl tries to apologize to Batman by already being ambushed by Franz and his gang to go over his aid but when she arrives she fought with Franz and beats him to him but relents to killing him, realizing that Batman was right all along. So then, because of all this, she retires from crime fighting. Later on, Batman investigates a murder scene with Detective Harvey Bullock, and just finding out that the Joker, already held at the Occam Asylum, was behind the crime where all the victims are already being all Joker-faced. So he goes to Alcum to talk to him, only to discover that he has escaped and put Franz as a decoy in this place. Then learns that Joker attacked Barbara and her father, Commissioner James Gordon, yeah, by actually shooting uh, Barbara in the stomach and kidnaps Commissioner Gordon. Which apparently he strips naked and then subjected to torture him inside the carnival. Showing him the photos he took of Barbara after shooting her and suddenly stripping her as well. So he basically raped her. So then that's where we got to see the flashbacks of Joker's story. Where he started out as just uh, an ordinary guy. You know, he wants to become a comedian. But he has a wife that sadly has been killed. But unfortunately, since he already failed miserably as a stand-up comedian, he, he agrees to help two criminals rob a former workplace that's inside a factory. So he dresses up as uh, the Wet Hood by wearing the mask and cape costume, intending to frame him. Suddenly, he fell into a bowling acid, and that's where he became, as we know it, the Joker. And already with green hair, and um, pale skin and this actually happened after the two criminals had been shot down anyway Batman decided to find Commissioner Gordon after Joker sent him a clue leading him to the amusement park which is the carnival and saves Gordon while Joker retreats him into the fun house but despite of his ordeals Gordon remains sane and demands Batman to capture Joker by using the book. Yes, by the book. So Batman follows Joker throughout the fun house as Joker tries to persuade him into one big killing joke. Which is basically one bad day is enough. That's what he refers to. Enough to drive an ordinary man insane. But Batman correctly guessed that it's one bad day that drove Batman into, as we speak, a vigilante. So of course, Batman eventually seduces the Joker, telling him that Gordon has remained sane despite of everything he suffered. He concludes that Joker is alone in his madness. But after all, they all fight off, and then that's where he tells the, the killing joke that made Batman laugh. Also in the mid-credits scene, that's where we find out that Barbara was in the hospital after being uh, shot in the stomach and brutally raped by the Joker. He's already in the real chair entering the secret room in her apartment and she turns on the computers which apparently she now becomes the Oracle. So 
so there you go that's um, Batman the Killing Joke and I would say this the first half of the film which basically turns into the Batgirl story was one of the weakest and the idea of actually having Batgirl having sex with Batman kind of went a bit too far but not too much I mean granted they didn't show any nudity in the scene they just show Barbara as Batgirl just stripping off you know, her suit you know, showing off her bra you know, almost ready to take it off so just started having sex on the rooftop so but hey I mean think of it this way this is an R-rated uh, animated film they're supposed to have some more stuff into the movie but I think they could have done a whole lot better I mean there was a lot of headshots a lot of blood everywhere uh, mostly from all the criminals that were getting shot but it didn't have uh, any uh, foul languages like I was hoping they would except for the word shit I was hoping there was going to be the word fuck in it because I know uh, Paris Fonts actually said freaking A instead of fucking A <laughs> yeah, that's what I noticed but and on top of that, uh, Paris France is probably the most cockiest uh, villain that they ever chose. and Technically very weak, too. Didn't care for that one. Just basically just a perverted asshole. Yeah. Mostly uh, obsessing with Batgirl. Almost like that he wanted to have sex with her. Or something. Well, anyway... But the last half of the film definitely got better, mostly focusing on the Joker, because that's exactly what the film is really about. It's supposed to focus on the Joker, about um, how going through flashbacks, you know, focusing on his origin before he became the Joker. You know, he's going around uh, attacking people, you know, giving them the clown face, and all of that that's happening, and, and he's about to capture uh, Commissioner Gordon and actually shooting Barbara which and raping her which lead, led to her into the hospital and Batman trying to stop the Joker and save Commissioner Gordon which leads to the um, the final punchline which is the killing joke so that's where it got better and I, I love to see the origin of the Joker because now we got to see exactly who he really is you know he's you know, he's just an ordinary guy he wants to become a stand-up comedian until he found out that his wife died and and he had to work together with the two criminals to, to do a job for his own sake so there you go <laughs> so something bad happens then I, I thought it worked at least but um, I also wish they had done some justice to uh, Batgirl. I really wish, and I agree. It, it you know, I, as much as I love uh, Tara Strong portraying the role of Batgirl, you know, Barbara Gordon, and she did a very good job doing the voice of her, because she has done that before. I just wish her story was better written, better paced, and definitely do her character some justice, because they just fucked this up, and turn into basically a sex story of some sorts. It just doesn't work. And that's sad. But it's great to hear Kevin Conway uh, doing the voice of Batman, even though he sounds quite different than his usual voice um, in the animated series, as well as the animated films. Um, but Mark Hamill remains the same as the Joker. He definitely sounds exactly the same. So there you go. I mean, considering how they're both um, in their 60s, so they're very old, but they definitely provide them very well. So it's good to hear them. Uh, the animation, well, they were going for a whole um, comic book feel to it, so they had to do some major changes. I mean, they had to use uh, scoping in the mix. Um, with all the fight scenes and all those other shots that they put into it. It also has sort of a mix of some of the 90s animation or so, but they just use a lot of rupture sculpting 
it's in high definition of course they wanted to make it look as pristine as, as possible but other than the the problem with the first half of the film I think it's a decent movie I just wish they had done some justice with the graphic novel and it definitely deserves better the score wasn't really that memorable I kinda wish they had a better score as it turned out but what can you do <laughs> And I kind of wish the pacing was a lot better, too. I mean, it is fast-paced, but it really needs some better pacing. But either way, it's worth watching. It's not as good as all the other animated films that Batman had, like Batman Mass of the Phantasm, which is one of the best ones. Uh, Batman uh, Zub-Zero, that's a good one, too, that focuses on uh, Mr. Freeze. And all the other ones that follow. Yeah, even the Batman, the, the Dark Knight Returns. But still, you know, they were going to come up with something. Given its R rating, which I really wish they had done even more to the material. I mean, I kind of wish the movie was a little bit longer. And had fixed some of the problems that went into it. But either way, it's worth watching. So, I get Batman the Killing Joke. Three stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.